Hey guys, welcome back to We Watch Movie. I'm Mike. I'm Jay. And this is the 90s greatest movies of all time. You're a goddamn Teenage toot. Teenage Mutant Ninja Power. Teenage Mutant Ninja. Shit. In the half shell on the hunt of the night. I don't know how it goes. <laughs> we have a tier on our Patreon. Partners in crime, y'all. The toppiest top top tier. Never pay full price for late pizza, but do pay full price for the top tier of our tier top. Derek Michael, an awesome friend of ours. We met you at Scarefest. I love the way your face looks. You have an awesome kid. I, love the, I love the way his tongue felt. It did. Uh, he was he kissed you like a gentleman. Yeah, he did. And then when he went down on me, uh, I didn't even complain. Derek Michael's a really cool guy. Uh, wish him some luck. He's having some shoulder surgery going down. Yeah. So I hope you get through that, my man. And Heal uh, that labrum. This is for you, you sexual beauty I fuck. I also hope that your labia turns out okay, because I know that Yeah, that was a really big concern. Really, he's got a loose labia. Yeah. You got to be careful. You could still have children, but we're not sure. Got to watch. But yeah, okay. So... Teenage Mutant Ninja Power. Hey yo, Major League Butt Kicking is back in town. Hey yo, oh! and they like, like you know they're coming around the sewer entrance with their shadows on the wall, man. And then it goes and it's turtles, and they're like, yeah. excellent. That is my introduction to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Amazing, fucking great cast, great choreography, uh, great fucking Shredder looked amazing. Oh, God damn, he must work out in Ghost Gym. <laughs> uh, but yeah, all sorts of cool shit. But Long it's so arms. strange. It's so strange to hear about its humble beginnings mm -hmm. and how different it could have been. The creators of this comic book, dude, it's so cool how the how the whole thing came to play because they're sitting around in their apartment and uh, they're hanging out, and then one of them drew like they're fucking, doodling. He drew Ninja Turtles, just not teenage mutant. Doodling. He just drew Ninja Turtles, and they handed it off to the other guy, and they were like laughing about it, and he was like, "I'm the one that made it." Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So like we drew this and then like we just laughed about it and we like passed out and went to sleep or whatever. And then the next day we we're like, dude, you know what? This could actually work. It took off and then they wanted to make toys of it. And then they wanted to make the TV series of it. And then eventually, I think it was 1984 when the first thing came out. And by 1990, TMNT, the movie came out with that classic poster with them sitting in the, uh, in the sewer. And they're yeah. all poking out like, is it my turn to eat the vagina? <laughs> It's not me. Uh, but the comic book, the first original comic book of the of the Eastman uh, layered combo is that it's a lot fucking darker than what we saw. Like, a lot darker. Um, these motherfuckers were killers. Like, these guys were fucking Punisher on steroids with turtle power. These motherfuckers chopped people's heads off. They killed people. Teenage they Mutant and, Murder and, and, Power. It was always weird because it was all in black and white, so you didn't even have the color scheme. So, yeah. you know, like, Raphael is red, Donatello's purple, Leonardo's blue, and Michelangelo's yellow, but you didn't even have that. Like, these guys were just like, they, they were cool cats, they were cool turtles, or whatever, and they were like, you know, doling out, uh, you know, um, vindication and justice in their own way but they were killing motherfuckers left and right it and Splinter was like how many people you kill bitch but he was a lot <laughs> fucking like more aggressive now even while the the tv show was going on and yeah. the movie was coming out eastman and laird kept their separate comic book series mm -hmm. was go going and they were like we kept it dirty which is rare we kept it raw which is rare yeah it's like a lot of the, a lot of those companies would be like nah man at one point in the comic book series they actually reference the TV show and the movie, yeah. and they like make fun That's of smart. it. Like they got the best of both worlds. We can write our dark shit and keep the turtles the way we want to keep them, and then we can let everybody else take this and Disney fi it. This but is pretty much like the Gallagher argument. Go like go 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 this is like the Gallagher that argument. That guy's playing Gallagher. Like uh, Liam wanted that fucking thing to be like about the music, and the other motherfucker was like, "No, let's keep rock and roll and throw out goddamn posters from a hotel room." <laughs> the movie itself, though, the 1990s movie was actually. Pretty close. It's not like exact, obviously. They couldn't show everything, right? But it's still pretty damn close to the dark. El like, that, the, the first uh, um, Turtles movie was m more in line with a dark comedy, not super dark, but it was a dark comedy comic book movie. That, and the second one was a little more lighthearted. And then the third one was like, let's go to Chuck E. Cheese. But they kept it at least close to Eastman and, and Laird's original vision. 
more so than a lot of other studios might have done. So much so that the director of uh, the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie got fired towards the end of the production, rumored, uh, rumoredly, yeah. rumoredly, allegedly. <laughs> and that didn't they? The uh, director actually got fired towards the end of production because he wanted to keep it dark, mm -hmm. and uh, the studio did not want to. Now this is it's an independent film because this is back when New Line was in its beginnings. Yeah. So technically, this was uh, uh, an, an, an independent. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, this was an independent <laughs> film, and because it was New Line, and they were on their up and comings. And uh, at the time, for a while, it was considered the most successful independent trip up, of all time. Trip Five Thousand. Listen, they, they, they did it the way they needed to. They, do it. they took that fucking star power from Mario and bitch. They went down the green tube oh, and went yeah. to the eighth level and dominated. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, uh, it, it's cool. It was cool to know that they shopped it around to several studios. And they're like, nah, that's not for us. Nah, dog, that ain't for me. Thank and then finally, New Line took a, a chance on them. Which, by the way, they've been doing pretty good by taking a chance on certain pro uh, properties. <laughs> Not my own place. I did four. Uh, which a kind of Which uh, coincidentally uh, came out the same time the Turtles comic book came out in '84. Um, and they they took their chance and and they did a really good job with it. Listen, take your chance, make your dance. It's the Space Jam. Yeah. You, <gasps> all right. The toy makers and the TV show makers are actually responsible for a lot of the uh, uh, tur Turtles in a Half Shell, Heroes in a Half Shell, all that shit. Like that was brought on later on. Again, the original uh, initiation of the comic book. It, it it was, it was meant to be a parody of Daredevil, which yeah. is why instead of the hand, you had the foot, and s instead of a stick, you had Splinter. It's kind of like it was well, kind of like the same story of He-Man, because He-Man was a successful toy line that became a cartoon, giant, huge, right. successful cartoon, because it was already, it, but it, it started as a toy line, and right. then back in the '80s, especially the mid to late '80s. They knew that selling toys, you needed a cartoon to accompany said toys so they could sell more of them. So that's why you saw that happen. And I, I'm sure that these people were smart and they were like looking at these, this property and they're like, man, it's turtles. They're fucking badass. They're ninjas. They got a fucking rat for a sensei. They got yeah. this cool shredder villain. Let's put that into a cartoon. And they're like, let's do it. They make some toys. Dude, I, I, ironically as fuck, ironically as fuck. Uh -huh. <laughs> the reason that the Ninja Turtles had such a hard time finding a studio to make the movie is because Matt Masters of the Universe failed Flop. so yeah. hard at the box office years before. Which, by the way, you guys None of the major studios wanted to touch it because they thought you can't take a toy franchise and make it into a movie. Listen, Frank Langella was a fucking goddamn icon in that movie. <laughs> you check that shit out. The, just his performance of Skeletor alone fucking earned a right to watch. So the movie came out, I think, two years after Batman, right? 89. And it yeah. lived in that. No, it came out one year. Uh, around the same time as 90. Batman. Yeah, mm -hmm. around the same time as Batman. And it lived in that time where you could make something dark, but also have it be a little bit whimsical. A little fun. A little bit for kids, little fun. but also dark enough for, for uh, parents. It's dark, it's it's kind of grimy, it's kind of dirty, but it's also inclusive for everyone. And you just don't get shit like that. Yeah, and I also think that it was it was the perfect blend of dark and light elements in that film that worked really well. Mm -hmm. And they were willing to take a chance to do that. They're like, look, we know that the dark roots of the comic book, we can't do that. We're trying to sell, you know, the, you know we're trying to market this to kids as well as to have the adults that are taking the kids to have a good time at the theater. So we're not gonna go that far. We're not gonna make it rated R and fucking dark and deep and crusty. We're gonna make it like a perfect blend. And plus they had amazing uh, puppeteer. Uh, was it Winston, Stan, uh, what was the fucking guy's name? Um, oh fuck. He died. Jim Henson. Jim. No, it wasn't Jim Henson. It was Jim Henson ran the whole thing. He ran. Was all it Jim Henson? Yeah, okay, Jim, it was Jim. Jim Henson ran the whole That's thing. Right. And it wasn't even puppeteers, dude. It's crazy what they fucking Muppets. did. They built these fiberglass. This is Stan Winston. <laughs> I'm a, I know I'm getting roasted, motherfuckers. Like I've been drinking. <laughs> but no, no, uh, Jim Henson. They built these. They built these fiberglass whole fucking turtles, mm -hmm. right? And then they put the foam on top of them, and then they painted it, and then they cut that shit out, and then for their heads. They use animatronics, yeah. so they put all this mechanical shit into their heads, and then you would have these people on the sidelines working the heads, speaking the lines that they were supposed to speak. But what's amazing about this movie, it doesn't, you don't have- Corey fucking, Feldman was in this bitch. You don't have fucking puppets that are just like, yes, no, yes, no, biscuits. That's how you talk they to your have, wife. Like, you can see, like, <laughs> dude, uh, when Donatello's trying to be cool, and he's like, tubular, yeah. like, cowabunga, and everybody's making fun of him. Acapella. 
Noah. Yeah. <laughs> when you see Leo be like, mm, like they have so many facial features. They have embarrassment. Mm. They have uh, dismissiveness. These turtles features have everything. And I think that, and again, this was the last major film Jim Henson worked on. No, I, the second. Well, you, well, he died during the second one, but yeah, yeah well, the last major franchise he worked yeah. on, in the, in the very least. Um, nobody wants to go back and try to do that. But if you took today's technology and you went back and you put the work in, and we talked to Christopher Nelson about this, mm -hmm. the um, Oscar-winning Suicide Squad uh, yeah, uh, uh, makeup, amazing guy, special cool guy, yeah, guy, Michael Myers. We talked to him about this, and he was even in awe of the way that the Ninja Turtles did what they did. They did the animatronics on the face. They had the foam and all the other shit going around. Nobody wants to take the time to do that today. So they're like, well, we'll do straight up CGI. But this movie, I really think it's one of those few movies, even though it's the Ninja Turtles and people shit on it or whatever, I think it's one of those movies that you'll never, you may never see a movie like it. No, anymore. you know what it is? Ever. It was lightning in a bottle. Yeah. And they fucking had lightning in a bottle twice because they had it with the Turtles 1 and Turtles 2, Secret of the Ooze, was just as good. Not, no, I mean, I would take Turtles 1 still, but Secret I like of Turtles 2 better myself. You shut the fuck up, Kino. I know, Jim. But, uh, you know, look, Kino was in there and he delivered Domino's Pizza. And Turtles 3 can suck my ass. I like Turtles 3 a little bit. But it's just nostalgia reasons. But either way, Turtles 1, uh, listen, the, the way they fucking look, just the overall appearance of the Turtles when they first appeared on screen so looked good. insane. They made good. it real. They yeah. brought Turtles to life! Michael Bay, I should stay in the bed, hey. Uh, decided like I'm gonna make these motherfuckers CGI and guess what they're gonna be called alien turtles <laughs> And then so I was like no nah, motherfucker. We're gonna stop you at the alien and they're like, all right fuck it I'll keep the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but he was gonna make them alien turtles listen There had been nothing wrong there had been nothing wrong with uh, updating the turtles look a little bit But keeping that same spirit of Jim Henson's puppeteering and the way the, the, that costume that he built with turtles one and two and putting that in a new Michael Bay movie listen the the Turtles 1 movie, it's got, it's dark, it's got comedy, it's got a good message in the middle, it's got a good message at the end. Like, it's about relying on each other and not relying on, you know, a parent uh -huh. that may not always be there. And that's really the story, and it's good for kids and it's good for adults even now. Because the idea was like, listen, you're not always going to have somebody in your life that's going to be there to tell you what to do and how to do it and when you should do it and why you should do it. You're going to have to go and move forward in your life and rely on each other and rely on yourself. And at the and end of the day... Like that, 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 that's the lesson. And in Raphael's case, he was dealing with a lot of anger. Yeah. He had to learn how to become a team player. Michelangelo, Michelangelo was all fun and games until Splinter goes missing. And then, and then Michelangelo almost doesn't speak. Well, Leonardo, he, Leonardo breaks down. Like, well, he's a leader too. I fucking cried. I remember, I cried recently. I watched this movie uh, not long ago, actually. And I, I got, well, I didn't like fucking full on Titanic cry, but I welled up. Um, when, um, well, there was two scenes, actually. There was two scenes, motherfuckers. There was one when uh, Leonardo embraces Raphael yeah. when he's talking to him in the tub. That was so well done and so beautiful. It was really a, a, a touching moment between brothers. Or, like, I didn't say, they could be brothers, they could be friends, whatever. They had a disagreement. Look, bad shit happened. Let's come together and fight some fucking Foot Clan. And then at the, uh, yeah. near around that part is when they, uh, when they all get around the circle and they cause that blue fucking light and, and Splinter shows up and talks to him like, this is your final lesson. Because I remember as a kid, I was like, oh my God, is he gonna fucking die? Splinter gonna die? <laughs> and then they all start holding each other and they're like trying and stuff. Yeah. Oh my like, God, fucking damn. But see, it was, it was done so well. It was blended so well mm -hmm. that it wasn't trying to be overly dark and it wasn't trying to be overly campy. It was just that right lightning that that wrote the entire, it, it was paced well, it looked good. Shredder was a fucking badass, dude. Yeah. That whole ending sequence with, with Splinter is, I still remember that. You know, that whole thing with, with, with uh, Splinter saying, for when you die, you die without <laughs> honor. And, goes, and again, dude, that was almost straight from the comic book. In the comic book, the, uh, uh, issue one, I'm, issue yeah. one, it switched up a couple things. Mm -hmm. But you had Splinter and the turtles and the ooze and all that shit. But they were killing motherfuckers. Yeah, and he used that to, to tell them that eight millimeter story when they direct when they made the movie, and it was really cool. In the comic book, Splinter asked the turtles yes. to kill Shredder yes. for, for him. He was like, weird. go out and avenge me. I was like, no, bitch, I got something to do. Yeah, like, in, in, in the that. comic book, it's kind of weird because Splinter's like, I have to, all right, Turtles, I raised you. I made you into fucking karate specialists. Don't be seen. But before I can order Don't any ever more dominoes, I need to ask you, now it's time to do something for Daddy. I need you to go out and I need you to kill Shredder. And 
for, my, for my family honor, he Splinter asked the turtles to kill Shredder in the comic. That motherfucker worked for the Cult of Thorn. Kill for him, Danny. <laughs> kill for God. Damn. And then, and then in the comic book, it, it plays out almost the exact same way as the movie. Shredder's fucking them up left and right. They're on the rooftop, but eventually they get the upper hand on Shredder, and he was like, "Just kill me." Leonardo fucks him up. Yeah, and, and Shredder's like, "Just kill me," and they're like, "No, we're too good to kill you." But here. Commit Oroko Saki. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> like, or commit Harry Perry. They, they, they wanted said, him to kill They basically himself. said, "Eat the bullet, bitch." Yeah, you lost. They gave they gave Splinter a weapon, and forgive me if I said that wrong. I'm sorry. I think it's called Harry Carey, where you kill yourself. But the Ninja Turtles actually tell Shredder to kill himself, to kill himself in front of them with while suicide. They fucking watch. It's like fuck that. How dark is that shit? Yeah, dude, it was crazy, and and the fact that Leo used those goddamn blades to perfect effect like it was not like what you like this is always weird to me in the you know as a kid it was still a great movie don't get me wrong uh team and one and the second secret of the use but the fact that leo was using fucking sharp ass katana swords and nobody was getting their fingers cut off their hands cut off <laughs> their hands cut off their you fucking can see jet in the comics off. though you yeah, can it, was, see it was weird yeah it was like god damn he must be he must have like a, an extra, like special turtle shield on that fucking katana blade when he hits bitches. It's it's dark, man. That's some dark shit. And no wonder that shit would not be in the fucking movie. Can you imagine fucking Donatello played by Corey Feldman rolls? He was like, "Kill yourself, dude!" Go <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck off! And then he's like, I'm "Tubular." Yeah, I don't think that will work out well. But you know what? Um, I would say about the movie though, I think that is one of the best. I'm not kidding. One of the best character reveals I've ever seen to this day when they show Shredder for the first time. The yeah. way that he looks with the TV screens around and he throws that fucking uh, knife. And he's pulling back the blades and you hear that. <laughs> Yeah. You know, that that shit. You know, they got that idea from a fucking cheese grater. They were writing the comic book, and yeah. the dude goes and gets a cheese grater, and he's like, dude, how badass would say. You know, I, they didn't say it, but you know, they had to be high as fuck. He's like, dude, I got a cheese grater. Like, how fucked up would it be if the bad guy was like made a cheese grater? Imagine if I ate fucking Rocky Road like this. <laughs> but yeah, dude, that, 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 like, it's one of the best uh, villain reveals I've ever seen in my yeah. life. And, and, and again, the guy that played Shredder, and I'm sorry I don't remember his name, was one of the best villains of all time. Yeah. To me, in my opinion, I think that Shredder, the reveal, and Shredder himself as a villain, yeah. as far as the movie version of him goes, is top ten. Top ten villain. I'm not kidding. Dude, I, I would put him in my not fucking just that, top ten. But I would say that the Turtles animatronics, the way that they built the Turtles, yeah. is top ten as well. Dude, they brought a comic book of fucking teenage mutant ninja turtles off a Power. fucking black and white page and said, guess what, bitch? I got a thing for you. <laughs> and they made it and real. It worked. And they, and they yeah. had that whole New York setting and they made it the layer. And everybody loved pizza for like, fuck. We all I love know. pizza, but that at that point, dude, pizza fucking sales must have been through the roof. It doesn't get enough respect. And that's our thoughts on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. By the way, April O'Neil was hot as fuck in that movie. Right, but they didn't ask her back. And by the way, she I She complained too much the first movie. She yeah. was like bitching the whole time. So they were well, like, I, fuck I, you, I want, recast. I don't know how far you got in the comic book, but by the way, they tamed down a lot of Casey Jones. Yeah. Casey Jones was a psychopathic fucking killer, 100% yeah. worse than the Turtles in the comic book, and they tamed his ass down way quick. I'm genuinely surprised that they even included Casey Jones in the movie. Do you want to read the comic did, book? Did, well, yeah, because it wasn't in the first episode. I think it was in the second or third, or the, the comic book. But when he meets Casey Jones, or the fourth, yeah. dude, that, that, that whole scene when they chase each other into the, uh, the, the, the garden area, or the, uh, the park. Yeah. That happens, but Casey Jones is literally a fucking psychopath. This motherfucker has seen way too many Jason movies. Like, he's yeah. on the level. Yeah. Stupid crazy. And, and, and again, they tied it in in a genius fashion. I'm shocked as shit. Like, I would have never thought they would have included that in the movie the mm. way they did, but they did. But, Derek, you're fucking awesome. Love you, Derek. We consider you a friend more than anything else, but thank you for also being our Patreon. And uh, Liam, you're fucking cool as shit, little dude. Continue to be a cool as shit, little I love dude. his collection of figurines that he's dude, got. He that, has, that little guy's got some cool stuff. I'm literally stuff. jealous of it. Uh, but uh, Liam, you're cool as fuck. Listen to us. I saw a recent tour. Be better. And I was like, man, I want that. I want that. I want that. I want this. I want that. How <laughs> come you got a better him, setup? Got him, got him, meet him, meet him, got him. <laughs> yeah, I was like fucking little monsters. <laughs> we love your fucking faces. If you're new to the channel, click that subscribe button to get some goddamn whimp in ya. Feels good. Feels good when you do it. It's gentle and it doesn't burn right away. It only burns after. <laughs>